All right, so making up for the ones that I didn't get to, this is the poem for Tuesday, April 21st. It is called Blessing the Boats by Lucille Clifton. Here we go. Woo, right off the bat, I noticed that there are no capital letters or punctuation in this poem. Sometimes that can be interesting. But there's a lot of boat stuff, like a big old metaphor about the sea and tide and boats, saying something about carrying sail through this to that. So it seems to me like she's using a metaphor about, um, you know, a boat as a vessel to take you through something difficult, you know, like the storm or the water or whatever is the difficult thing in your life, or maybe like the coronavirus quarantine. And this boat is going to take you through it. So that's all I got from the first time. Here we go. Take two. Blessing the boats. Ooh, I just noticed that there's alliteration in the title. Blah, blah. May the tide that is entering even now, the lip of our understanding, carry you out beyond the face of fear. Ooh, I like that line. Beyond the face of fear. I'm going to start over since it's so short. May the tide that is entering even now, the lip of our understanding, carry you out beyond the face of fear. May you kiss the wind, then turn from it, certain that it will love your back. May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever. And may you and your innocence sail through this to that. Ooh, there's a lot going on in this poem. There are a couple words that make me think that there's more meaning than I thought initially, but okay, let's go through one, one metaphor at a time. Because it seems to me there are four. The first one is, May the tide that is entering even now the lip of our understanding carry you out beyond the face of fear. Okay, so that sounds to me like that thing about the lip of our understanding. So the tide is coming in and it's entering like our ability to understand because we're humans and we're not like capable of understanding everything. So may the tide that is coming in carry you out beyond the face of fear. So like, oh man, that's just so interesting. So it's like, here we are, right? We're like in our little, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing, so that's like all I can think about right now. But like I'm thinking, so like, let's say that you're one of those rocks over there and the water's like rushing up against you over and over and over. She's saying like, if the rock kind of like something that's stable, that represents us and where we are and like human understanding and what we know and what we don't, and she's saying, like, may the, may the tide come and push you further so that you can completely let go of fear. Oh, that's such a cool idea. Okay. May you kiss the wind, then turn from it, certain that it will love you back, that it will love your back. Sorry. Um, that one, I, I don't necessarily. May you kiss the wind and then turn around, hoping it will, knowing that it will love your back. I guess that's maybe a metaphor for taking risks. You know, may you just live with joy and love. And then when you turn around and you are vulnerable and exposed, you just have to, you just have to know in your gut that you're okay, that like, you're okay. The wind will love you back. Okay. May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever. May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever. So if the tide is like taking us, like to enlightenment, like from this place where we are now, this is what we can't understand. It's taking us past where we no longer fear, fear. We no longer see the face of fear. And it's saying, may you see water, water waving forever. Huh. Like the water represents, I don't know, what do you think? May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever. Maybe like the sense of adventure, joy of like wanting to go out and do things. And may you, this is why I really miss actually getting to do the poem of the day with you in person. Um, Cause when, when we do this in class, I think I told you this way back when, but I haven't mentioned it in a long time. I've never read this poem. Like Mr. Lodel sends us a new poem every day. And that's part of what makes it effective is that I walk through the poem with you and like, I haven't studied this poem. I don't have like a whole drawer full of handouts about this particular poem. I don't know this poem, but like when we're in the room and all the class is reading it together, sometimes really great ideas will come from different places. So I really wish that you were here so that we could all be shouting stuff out. Um, okay. And then the last two lines and may you in your innocence 
sail through this to that. Okay, so the word innocence is interesting to me here. May you in your innocence sail through this to that. Blessing the boats. May you in your innocence sail through this to that. I think it's, I also noticed that the poem is kind of laid out like a prayer. Like I used to know this Buddhist prayer and every line would start with may, you know, um, may the naked now be clothed and may the hunger, hungry eat their fill, that kind of stuff. So I noticed that. So almost, I almost think like maybe this is just like a blessing to a person. Like may you live life with joy. May you let the tide take you past human understanding and fear. And may you in your innocence make it through. That's what I would write about. And this is definitely the kind of poem where I don't, I don't think that I would be able to write about it exhaustively where I could break down every single line and what it means, but I could definitely get a lot out of this one. Okay. Bye. I love you guys. Miss you. Bye.